Hi, I'm James from Chaosium. I sat down and talked to Bridget Jeffries. Bridget is on the community ambassador team for Chaosium's community content programs on DriveThruRPG. She also has her own company in the TTRPG space. I talked to Bridget about her professional journey. I think that her story explores some really effective ways to get involved in the TTRPG space as a professional. I also think it has some great takeaways about things like branding and community involvement and networking. I started off the interview by asking Bridget to tell us about her company. I'm going to jump across to that interview in just a moment, but first, remember to subscribe to the Chaosium YouTube channel, and thanks for watching. Yeah, so um, Sega, the extended version of Symphony Entertainment Gaming and Arts, that's my uh, gaming club, and it's now more or less evolved into my brand. Uh, it's, mm, let me step backwards. So prior to the launch of Symphony Entertainment, I was working with Rogue Thulu, and Rogue Thulu uh, was a gaming club that put on a crap ton of in-person events all through uh, Central Ohio, primarily at Origins. And when I say a crap ton of events, I'm talking like 150 events going off at Origin. They're all Call of Cthulhu under Road Cthulhu. I mean, uh, Byron Wingate and his entire family ran that bad boy to a crib. Black lit rooms. Pause. Oh, no, I'm, I'm sorry. To, I completely interrupted you there. What I, I just wanted to clarify, you got involved as a fan specifically. Yep. Uh, they were uh, Road Cthulhu is my first Call of Cthulhu game that I actually was like, whoa, what is Call of Cthulhu? I played it in college at some point, but again, wasn't mature enough to appreciate it. My first time actually getting my wig blown back with Call of Cthulhu was via Rogue Cthulhu at Origins. So they had the name, they had a logo, they had a brand, and most importantly, they had a reputation for top shelf keepers, quality content. So uh, I tested it out for the first time as I, I don't even really know. And was like, oh, is all of Cthulhu like this? Do all people who role play and call it Cthulhu role play to this quality? How does this work? Next Origins, and actually at another con that they hosted, I went back and I went back and I went back. And suddenly, like, you know, I looked up one year and my entire event catalog was all Rogue Cthulhu. I was playing, you know, three Rogue Cthulhu events, Rogue Cthulhu events a day uh, because I really enjoyed the genre, the setting, the room, and I got attached to the brand. Um, and this is going to walk, I promise this has a purpose. <laughs> the one thing I admired about them is not only did they have great content, not only did they have formal support from Chaosium, uh, you know, Chaosium provided them prize support. You know, every time you played a game at a table, you walked away with one of their books. It was just really awesome thing. But the big thing that they did that stood out to me is they cultivated a community, which is very, very important. Um, because if you're going to come into this hobby, if you're going to come into a certain genre, it is nice to be able to lean on people who will support you uh, in and off the table. And that's something Rogue Cthulhu did exceptionally well. And it's something that I thought to myself, I want to model that. Jumping forward to Symphony Entertainment, Rogue winded up collapsing due to adult reasons. Life hits us fast. We do what we can can. And Symphony's favorite phrase is life uh, over gaming always. We have families, we have bills, we have stuff that needs to get done. You game when you can um, so I started Symphony Entertainment and modeled a lot of what I was building in her after what I loved and appreciated about um, what the Wingates did with Ro Cthulhu. So community, really, really big thing. Cultivating a community, helping your members feel seen, showing that gratitude, listening to them. Um, the second thing that I really did, or I'm really attempting to do is I'm big on player agency. I love to see players run the table. There's something magical about when you as a keeper, as a GM can sit back and let your players just run where you're not leading them by the nose, where you're not like whipping them on the back and giving them a direction. Just let them play their game. I am there to prevent an adventure or present an adventure. It's their game to play. Um, and that's a big thing that I wanted to introduce into Symphony. So the inception, the inception of Symphony Entertainment was I saw a gaming club that I absolutely loved and I wanted to do the same thing. So what was the next step from there? How did this evolve from a gaming group into something more? Yeah, so when you, uh, when you make that decision to do something of your own and have your own umbrella that you can kind of uh, uh, operate under, it's kind of like you just built your own house. You get to you know, put on your color side and you get to decide what the interior looks like. Uh, you can also change it mid-stroke if it's not working. So Symphony Entertainment, Jamie, when I originally launched it, was going to be a gaming club. I was going to recruit keepers, and we were going to put on lots of events. And then I realized exactly how much of a logistical nightmare that can potentially be. 
trying to coordinate keepers, comps, prize support, conventions, real life line. I realized that's not something I was willing to do. So now I'm sitting here with this pretty logo and this fun idea, but nothing really to do. So I said, okay, well, if I'm not onboarding keepers, what else can I do with this house that I'm building? I was like, oh, you know what? I'll build it around the stuff that I'm doing. So the um, publications that I do with Bay Dollar Z for anything I publish on the Miskatonic Repository, you'll see the symphony logo on it. Um, two things I'm doing, I'm building brand awareness, one stream, one podcast, one publication at a time, even something as a minuscule as one tweet, <laughs> Twitter, God bless me, let me cut that one out because y'all know I'm not active on Twitter, uh, <laughs> one Facebook post at a time. Uh, but the other thing that I'm doing is kind of finding myself and what I want it to present as I go. When you're starting something like this, you've got so many different options. How did you figure out what lane to pick, what you needed to do, what kind of specializations were out there? Yeah, I talked to my best friend in a car, <laughs> uh, leaving Sin City Con. I was like, I want to do something. I want to name it Symphony for reasons. Um, but I want to do something similar to Rogue Thulu, but I want to make it very unique to my vision. He's like, well, what's your vision? I was like, well, I really am into horror tabletop role-playing games right now. And he's like, okay, then you need to do horror tabletop role-playing games. So I said, all right, well, how far do I stretch it? Like, you could technically make a RuneQuest game a horror game. You could technically make a D&D game a horror game. Like, where do I draw the line? He was like, choose your lane and stick with it. So that's what I did. I chose horror systems. So if you go to symphonyentertainment.com, our focus is on horror systems. We don't want to see your horror version of D&D. Uh, we want to see Call of Cthulhu because that is a horror-based system. So it's, it's more or less choosing your lane, choosing your niche, and then running in that direction and trying to be consistent and true uh, to the brand's integrity. Your role with Chaosium is as part of the community ambassador team for the community content program. So that means that writing and talking to writers is a big part of your work. How did writing become something that you did and that you involved in the processes of your own company? Uh, writing scenarios. Um, to back into where I even got into writing scenarios, uh, at first I was running my own content, uh, which typically I was running stuff off of like a sticky note because that's what I had. Uh, but I was running games. <laughs> under Ro Cthulhu. Um, you know, I became one of their full-time GMs at the, the conventions. And because I was still kind of new to the horror uh, hobby, I wasn't reading, you know, modules. I was just creating my own stuff because that's what they did. It was one of the things that a, a lot of their chief people, they created their own content. So I learned from them. I was like, all right, cool. Stick, you know, basic clock art and go. Uh, and I was doing that, doing that, doing that. And then Fun story, Jared from Bay Dollar Z actually reached out to Byron Wingate, who was the head of Roku Thulu, and said, hey, uh, I'm looking for diverse voices uh, to write some content, to write a scenario, some playable content for my magazine. Do you know anybody? And Byron was like, oh, yeah, you should holler at Bridget. Uh, she has this game I just played called, uh, that I just play tested called, excuse me, uh, Beast of Jevudan, and I think it would make a great write-up. So Jared reaches out to me. And Jamie, this is in the blind. Like, I didn't know they had this conversation. I didn't know what Beta was if was. I for sure didn't know who Jared was. He's like, hey, I'm this person. I work for here. And I would love to have you write some content for me. I would love to have you write up this game called, you know, Beast of Jevodon. I'm just like, I don't write up full games. I haven't even read a module. True story, Jamie. This is honest to God true. The first module I've ever read was the one that I wrote. Wow. I forgot, you can ask Jared. I had never read, I had never read a written module before. The first module I ever read was the one that I wrote. So uh, Jared says like, yeah, I think you should do it. I was like, listen, I appreciate the compliment and I'm super excited that you want to involve me, but I don't know what I'm doing. I don't even know how to start. And he said, oh, that's okay. I'll guide you through it. It took a year, no joke. It honestly took me like 12 months to write this scenario because I was so intimidated. I was so underprepared. I was so insecure and I had never done it before. But once I had done it, and I saw the process and I understood what went into it, what the expectations were and how the, 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 how smooth it could be. I was like, oh, I like this. I bet I could do this again. How do I, how do I do this again? And then talking to Jerry's like, all right, how do I publish my stuff? I want, I want to do this again. How do I do this again? Cause I can't just jump into chaos Seems inbox. Can I and be like, Hey, can I write for you? He's like, oh, the Miskatonic repository. So you basically got involved as a fan and you started organizing gaming groups, then you started creating your own content for these gaming groups, then you started formally writing and publishing the content for these gaming groups, then you started talking about publishing your own content, and from there, you were hired by Chaosium. That's the pathway in. 
that's the pathway in. Yeah. Can I tell you a really random story about me getting onboarded with chaos too? So that was super funny. Um, uh, um, one thing I'm going to say, if you start creating content, be consistent and keep putting content out because people recognize it, people see it. Uh, and if you have it branded, and I'm not saying you have to go out and spend big buku money on a sexy logo on a website. If you have it branded, even if it's just your own name, uh, people start associating that. So I was uh, putting out content. I was putting out posts. I was trying to build this community. Uh, and I was approached by Gnome Stew to do uh, an article on anything. Yet again, I had never written an article. I didn't know what to talk about. I was like, I don't know what I can talk about. What can I write about? What do I feel like I'm an expert? Oh, you know what? At this point, I'm working on one, almost two publications on the Miskatonic Repository. I can write an article on how you self-publish on the Miskatonic Repository. So I sent out that, that um, article. It was published. Around the same time, someone else had recommended me over to the Miskatonic University podcast and said, hey, uh, I think this, this girl Bridget would be a cool person to interview. So I hop on there, again, terrified out of my mind because I had never been on a podcast before. I was like, what do I talk about? What do I talk about? What do I know? What is something that I know with enough uh, integrity and, and sincerity and experience? Oh, publishing on the Miskatonic Repository. So what did I talk about on the podcast? <laughs> publishing on the Miskatonic Repository because it was fresh. I knew it and I had just finished doing it with Sorrow and Savo and I was working to do it again. Chaosium, and I'm going to tell you guys this right now, especially everybody on Facebook, uh, Instagram, and Twitter. Chaosium, we see you. We see the comments you make. We see the things that you're saying. We know your engagement. We can pin the ones that always come and bring the positivity and we can always pin the ones that come and bring the drama. Be aware of what you say on social media, not just in front of chaos and eyes, in front of anybody's eyes, because it's amazing how many people can recognize like, oh, it's that guy in a positive or negative sense. That being said, Chaosium mob was like, I just heard this girl on the Miskatonic University podcast talking about the repository. And now I'm looking at an article <laughs> she wrote about being on the Miskatonic Repository, maybe we should bring her on formally to do what she's pretty much already doing. That's how I got onboarded with you guys. So you just basically got involved, you took opportunities when they were presented, and you just did things, you just started creating. I mean, that's the advice that everyone gives, but I think that you really, really put it into practice. You just build it, you just do it. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I could tell you tell you that it was some master strategy and I had this business plan and this art that I planned on following. No, I found something that I enjoyed. I found something that I love. I branded it and I was consistently, I was consistent about it and I was passionate about it. And it's just, it keeps rolling, 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 rolling. Just like a, a snowball going downhill, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger.